Hey, we're live again. Welcome back. I hope everybody's just hanging around their computers and, and watching uh, Instagram Live, watching a, a mini son of Monster Palooza. Boy, that's a mouthful. Um, so I hope everybody enjoyed Tom Woodruff. Um, I always enjoy Tom Woodruff. But I've got another guest that's uh, popped into the booth. Uh, I've been watching him on Instagram for a while, and I thought, I've never met this person, so I should probably meet them, talk to them, and hopefully this goes really well. I hear he's a very nice man. So everybody, Gordon Tarpley. Hey, <laughs> Gordon, how are you I'm doing? Why we, you how do we do this thing? Like, we, can, we can do the elbow. Uh, there all we right. go. So. Oh my gosh, check out this. Somebody gave me the seat with the back facing the front. Well, uh, <laughs> there we go. We fixed it. We fixed it. Thank goodness. Oh my gosh. So like I said, it, it, it's, um, it was interesting. Uh, uh, I've been following you on Instagram for a while. And I've been following you for a long, long time And there you go. As well. And yeah. it's funny. We start... We start you know, I like this and I like that, and we start interacting. Yeah, and, it. and it's like I think this guy's pretty local. And then I start looking up Gordon Tarpley. Twelve minutes away. Twelve minutes away. Yeah, oh my gosh! So there you go. <laughs> well, you're gonna be over more often than probably. I hope so. <laughs> a lot of the uh, the makeups I get put in are done blocks from here. Now, who's doing those makeups? Uh, a lot of them are done by Sydney Cumbie, who's um, I shoot there. the dead on. Oh, okay. On Instagram, okay. and uh, he literally lives. Like, because I follow that as well. Like three three minute walk from your house. So. Okay, you know, okay, that's right. Because he was doing a, a promotion a while back, and I started following him. Yeah. So it was kind of like, wait a minute, that looks really yeah. familiar <laughs> where you live, and it's like I think that's close to where I live. Yeah. And I, I made some shout out to him, and I said, we might be neighbors. I think we are. So. Yeah, you guys could share stuff. He's got a lot it's, of costume components. It's, yeah, it's a small world. world. So you know, oh, you're so close. Yeah, randomly. Uh, on one of the Stan Winston School live feeds from like, I want to say 2013, maybe even 2012. Okay. You were you were doing a live feed and yeah. I got to be on there and we talked real briefly. Really? I was living in Florida at the time. What was the what was the I tutorial? I cannot on? remember. What some some foam fab thing, I'm sure. But Shocking. Kaiju. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> what the big kaiju suit? Uh, I don't. I've think done so. so many. I think. I think. I still in like. I don't. You know. I don't know if the Sam Winston guys are. are you know. I know they gave you some shout outs, which I really appreciate. <laughs> but um, they can correct what it was. But I think I've got around ten or twelve tutorials on there. They've all been very handy to me. The one. Thanks I've, so much. I've, I've watched. I've watched <laughs> many of them. I. I. Uh, I love watching the Stan Winston videos because they, they they've been fun. Very very interesting to see how uh, everybody's takes on how they do things. Because, right. Because you know people have different ways of doing stuff yeah. different ways of doing the same things that I find to be very enlightening no and I, that's why I always loved about working with different people in the shops and at, at first I, I kind of was a little bit of a, a shop hopper you know where yeah. you know you start out at one shop and it's like okay the, the work runs out everybody kind of gets laid off and you got to find another job and so you hop over to wherever I went from John Beekler's shop to alchemy effects mm -hmm. to, to you know some KMB or optic nerve and things like that and then I get to work with other fabricators and it's like what are you using how are you using that and you know it's why like are, magic opens up it magic opens up and then they do the same thing and it's like oh you're using that tool that's really interesting how you're cutting this or sewing mm -hmm. that or doing whatever so and to see just to walk into any shop anytime I've been able to visit anywhere and see in 10 minutes you learn things that or total common sense once you see it, but you right. never thought of it yourself, and right. then like, oh, that makes my life way, way easier. So many things. Yeah. <laughs> so many things. I mean, it's just, yeah, I, I, I can't even begin to think, you know, but just yeah. different tools that we use and things like that, or different materials or thread. I mean, when I first started sewing, um, well, I mean, I started sewing a long time ago when I was a kid, making puppets and marionettes yeah, and things yeah. like that. But then coming out here, and we would get like the big spools of thread when I'm putting together like, you know, costumes and whatever, muscle suits. and. So you, you pull out like, you know, maybe a yard of thread and you cut it. <laughs> well, then you've probably used like the silamide thread. No. no. Oh, see, there you go. So it's, it, it's this thread, is a uh, taxidermist thread. Okay. And so you open up this cardboard package. It's a long, thin package. And you break off the bottom. And it's spooled specially inside. And you cut off the bottom. And you pull out one strand at a time. It's yes. already it's perfect, pre-cut. Perfect size. Well, it's like... Why uh, did I not uh, have uh, this the last fifteen years? <laughs> it's just like no, it's mad thing. So like the See, I just learned a thing. Just there now. you go, still mad. Yeah, I'll show you later on. Some other. You come over for a beer sometime. I'll show you. Right um, when we're not in the convention center. Yes, it's, it's, <laughs> the convention center. Is the convention center, <laughs> aka. You need to have background noise of show. people walking around and stuff. I thought about it, but there's too many electrical <laughs> things going on. So. Um, I lost my train of thought. I'm very sorry. <laughs> but anyhow, um, the uh, uh, the makeups and everything that you're doing. Now, 
and I see a lot of these on mm -hmm. here, and I purposely didn't go and research like, okay, what's Gordon in? What's Gordon doing? Yeah. I was like, because I, I wanted to ask you here now. So, um, so what are these makeups for that you're doing? Are these for a, a project or a, a film? A lot or? of times I'm modeling stuff for like RBFX, okay. who, you know, Roland from RBFX right. is always, Fantastic. always cranking out new, new prosthetics, right. and so I'm in those a lot for, you know, what some new thing will Which come out. Which David has sculpted on, correct? Yes. Um, yes, hiding Did back there. <laughs> every, every once in a while, I get to be a creature on a on like a, a little video project or a film or something or a zombie or a robot. So, right. um, and I love to do more of that type of stuff. So whenever that comes along, I'm very happy. So, uh, yeah, but I've been in, in a lot of makeups, okay. uh, especially for like I said for the RBFX stuff. And then now all the videos I put up, there's a lot of goofy stuff because when you put them on, we used to put them on, take pictures, and then take it off and right. then be done. But you, we found that there's this thing called TikTok, which, you know, apparently China's spying on us from there, but it's hilarious <laughs> and it gets tons and tons of, you know, feedback from people. And like, this is really fun. So now we're, you know, multitasking. Those, those are, <laughs> to, to sound like my grandfather, those are a hoot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, well, that's the thing is I, I didn't expect anything to take off like it did. Right. I post a goofy video and then all of a sudden it's got 55 million views. And I'm right. like, oh, Oh, this could be a thing this that people thing. enjoy. Yeah, and there's no part of me. I'm not doing that as a project. It's just you literally like it, when we go to model makeup, I will make some videos right. and have some content to post right. on. Uh, but yeah, that's been really kind of fun to do on the yeah. side. And then on outside of that, uh, I do a lot of prop restoration. So right. real movie props. I do work for Tom Spina Designs. Okay. Who, uh, Excellent. I love working with Tom him. should be watching. Yeah, Tom Spine, are you watching this? <laughs> if not, I don't know. But he's he's one of my favorite people to work with and yeah. he's uh I enjoy his work too. He, if he were fantastic. on the West Coast I would have said, Tom, please come oh, by. <laughs> yeah, we should get him on a Zoom call. Yeah, so, exactly. But yeah. but he's super fun to work with. I talked to him just before I came up here and okay. um he has passed me so much cool work in the past, like restoration on right. pro like movie props that are just things that I looked at as a kid that now here I am working on the thing. Iconic and things that yeah. it's like, all, I'm holding this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then my brain checks out because you got to get into work mode. But right. it's, you know, here's this, like literally some of my favorite things ever have been in my hands. Yeah. And I've been able to work on them, which is, to me, is unbelievable. It's some of the things like we were talking about with uh, Tom Woodruff a second ago. I was like coming out to L.A., you know, because I moved out here from Wisconsin. Okay. Where are you from? Florida. You're, you're from Florida. Okay. So every, the same, everybody's same Los experience. Angeles is pretty much from somewhere else. Even if you were born here like David, his parents are not from here. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> essentially, you're not from here. No, but everybody moves out here from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and all of a sudden to be able to have that tactile, like you said, I grew up watching this thing and now I'm working on this thing. And there's times in the shop when I'm, you know, wherever I was working, it didn't matter. And I'm, I'm working on some little character. And it's just like, you know, it's, it's you're it's in work. there in the morning, yeah. and you're working like that. And all of a sudden you look around and you kind of go, uh, Man, that's that's the thing from that. Yeah, I think that's the T Rex from Jurassic Park, or this is the thing from you know. Yep, it's just a, it's amazing. No oh. matter the littlest films, the big film. I had so my dad. He worked for a place uh, Pratt Whitney makes aircraft right. engines, and he worked in their um, like their media department. And he made like trade show movies and stuff. And then when they okay. needed to do any special effects, he would build the models. And they would all function, and they were really really well done. And you know he referenced he had tons of movie books since I was a kid and had a lot of sin effects we had since like eighty one probably every, yeah every issue of so it we, we we had all the issues up like he yeah. from the first issue I'm motioning to the to the, the booth next door the sin effects booth the sin effects booth <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so I had those to look at as a kid and there's right. when I first got out here um, maybe twenty. 14, is that right? Maybe early 2015, they had a Rick Baker auction, a prop store, and okay. this the first time I actually hung out with Tom, he's like, oh, come out to the, you know, let's check out all this Rick Baker right. stuff. And there were pieces there that I'd looked at in Cinefix that sure. would literally hold it. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, it feels like to me. I, I bid on a Harry and a Henderson's muscle suit, oh. and I lost it by $100. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> I know that the Harry and Henderson stuff, the same thing, and they had, yeah. um, Greystoke, which was one right. that I love the stuff from Greystoke. Uh, yeah. So to see it all just right there and, and, right. and it's so 
I'm used to seeing things when I lived in Florida. If I'd look at that, it'd be in a museum or behind right. glass, and it just have it right there, and then they just hand it to you, and you're right. holding the thing. I mean, like maybe like metal armatures and stuff that aren't going to get hurt if I'm holding sure. it. But I still felt like, oh my gosh, why is this? It's, in my hand? it's precious. It's yeah. like you know, and, and that's the thing. We feel like that. I know David, who we keep motioning to David behind the camera here, Hi. David Woodruff, who's running a, a, a lot of our, our tech stuff in the background here. But I mean, he's a massive Batman fan, as yeah. is his dad. And it's like to get your hands on these things that this is the original prosthetic that Jack Nicholson, or this is the original suit that so and so wore. And, and Keaton's in it, and yeah. like the old shoes, and it's like. No, uh, and just, yeah, you know, it's like. Oh, oh, Michael Keaton sweat. <laughs> oh, so I was working at, I do a lot of work. Um, I'll do on site at Prop Store for Tom. Okay. And I was working on something, and I, you know, that old foam latex smell. Yeah. And I was like, where is that coming from? It just so, it was so strong in my area. Right. And I look up, and there's like, you know, a Keaton mask just hanging out on the shelf, <laughs> just right next to me. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, just, get back to it. <laughs> it's just vaporing. Yeah. Out. Now, you're clearly, um, you're a performer. Yeah, I like this. So, I mean, where did, where did this come from? I mean, was this something that was always in you as a kid? or? Uh, well, know? when I was younger, all through high school, I, I took drama classes and okay. stuff. So, I, I'm used to kind of being in front of people, and I played in bands for years. So, I'd get in front of a big crowd of people right. and do stuff. I I still prefer to be in a thing yep. rather than my face. But I'll show my face. It's fine. Yeah. But, you know, if I'm in a Is makeup, this your real face? This is my real face. Okay. This Just is an extra my real face. It's like, you can see my whole head. <laughs> this is even extra. <laughs> You, sometimes I have a little hair up here. There's right. not much here, but you know. But uh, <laughs> making sure you can see as much as possible today. Right. But, right. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoy that aspect of. I like being like performing. Uh, it's fun, so I enjoy it as much as possible. If I get in a suit or do a thing, like I said, the suit stuff is is great. I just finished right. a show. Right. Oh, three PO is, is what what Woodruff is saying back there, here. Somebody there was there was. From off camera here, I hear three PO. So, <laughs> I was getting from it. I was getting to it. I was getting to it. So as a a, a huge Star Wars nerd, and I like Star Wars stuff. Right. Back, uh, let's see how long ago I, I put together a C three PO costume, and I bought a lot of the pieces and made some of the pieces. And my current suit, I've made almost all of, but the so you've rebuilt. What? Yeah, and, yeah, and a lot of them is made. It's made because I've you know have uh, had molds made off of castings and I've right. created my own my own parts out of those and 3d printed and modeled a lot of the parts but the previous versions I'd bought pieces and okay. built up a c3po suit so I'd be in the c3po costume a lot I didn't think I was gonna be able to wear it when I first got it because I weighed about probably like 25 pounds more than I wow. do now and I was like well, I oh you weighed more yeah. I thought you're saying the suit weight no no, no and I'm like I can I can almost fit it if I lose some weight kind of thing so I Drop my weight down. I always wanted to get into a three PL suit too, <laughs> but I don't think now, I could do it. <laughs> well, this is the thing: is with the, the digital well, yeah. we can make it fit you. Real, it would be very broad <laughs> season. We, we could do it. We scale all appropriately, so nobody would know <laughs> unless they're close. Linebackers you know? three PL. <laughs> we can make that happen. We can make that happen. But doing that has led to a tremendous amount of things because putting a suit together, like I did the the gold chrome, I figured out all on my own as far right. as. You know, I, there's a place called Spectrochrome that does okay. gold chrome. They're like one of the bigger names. So is that a process where they're spraying it? Or yeah, it's, dipping a spray, it it's a spray. It's a spray chrome. Like this, uh, they spray down silver, like exactly like you use to make mirrors. Okay. And then you tint, oh wow. And then you use a tint coat on it to make it gold. So it's a pretty tough or. Uh, if you do it right, it can be very very sturdy. It's okay. like an auto paint over the top of it. So, so what so is what's the base material that your costumes that you're wearing are, are made so out of? The 3PO right now, my costume has got. Uh, vacuform parts, 3D printed parts, fiberglass parts, okay. and some resin parts. So like resin rotocast pieces that just... You don't want to have one more, like a urethane piece in there maybe? I do. <laughs> I, actually, I have work on a flexible <laughs> urethane shorts that I'm working on right now. So, Why not? Yeah, <laughs> because... Now, have you had a chance to actually be in close proximity to an original suit? Yes, or like that, yes, or? thanks to Tom Sweeney. I've been okay. uh, to the archives, uh, Lucasfilm archives a couple of times. Oh, great. And there's pieces everywhere. I'm waiting for somebody to take me up to Luke's from yeah. archive. <laughs> well, let me tell you let me tell you an awesome story about the first time I went to the archives. And then we go in, and I don't want to miss anything. I had, sure. to, pee, I had to pee so bad. <laughs> so they're walking us up and down the aisles, and there's just, just everything I've ever loved is everywhere. Yeah. So I'm just freaking out. And then I can, I knew when I walked in, there's a big shelf down at the end that had all three people parts. I could see it when I came in, but we weren't there yet. And sure. I was like, okay, we got to get to the park. I can't go to the bathroom. I'm going to miss this. So as soon as we hit that, I'm like, take it all in, just, you know, look at it as hard as I can, try to remember everything. 
And then, okay, we're moving on. I'm like, I have to go to the bathroom. I have to pee. So I go out to the bathroom, do my thing, go to wash my hands, soap dispenser. It spooges on my <laughs> pants. And then I'm like, oh, it looks, it's the wrong. It's not good. It's not, it's it's not, not good. I'm like, I either wash it off and come back in with a big wet spot on my yeah. pants or I leave it here and have a big white gooey yeah. th- and I'm like it's very PG-13 yes so yeah. I'm like okay okay what am I going to do so I you know wash and I come <laughs> back in and then I made fun of me forever because I just saw the three PO parts and then mm-hmm. I had an accident oh look at, look at that so three PO parts thanks guys you peed your pants but uh, yes I've been close to all a whole bunch of the pieces which has been now have you had any interaction with uh, interaction with uh, Tony Daniels Yes, and uh, a little bit here and there. He's actually been really nice to me, and right. I hear mixed things from people. Because sometimes yeah. people are like, "Oh, he's such a jerk," and then he's been very nice to me. Uh, I, I, I wanted to read his book so bad. I have it. I haven't read it yet. So. I got it on audio because I thought it's him reading. Why right? would you, yeah? It, it's Anthony Daniels reading, uh, or Anthony. Yeah. I'm sorry, Anthony Daniels. <laughs> um, Anthony Daniels reading his own book. As his experience as C three PO from the original, yeah, all the way through to so the you very get all last. his inflections, and, and it's you're listening to C three PO. I mean, <laughs> and it's beautiful to listen to, and I I, I really loved it. I thought it was fantastic. So it, he, he's, he's been a good dude. I'm, I have not read the book, and I would love to get the audio book because it because it's the only I'm, way to do it. When I'm in a project, I can have it on and yeah. zone out. And for me, no, what do you what do you do with the suit? I mean, like, I mean, is this for your own enjoyment, or I, do you I, initially? Yes, and then um, in the last couple of years, I've got some jobs doing like little appearance things, and then I did a, an ESPN commercial okay. last year that was. And so I'm assuming that's all through Lucasfilm yeah, a- approved, the, the, and the last one I had a, a kerfuffle a while back, but that's all good now. Good, so, good. Um, and then since then, I did um, a show called Jedi Temple Challenge, which is okay. Uh, it's like a kids game show, is uh, done but through Lucasfilm, and on oh, Ed Best, who plays Jar Jar Binks, is the right. host. And I play the co-host droid. Excellent. So, and it's voiced by Mary Holland, who's done uh, a bunch of commercials and right. TV shows and stuff. So I'm a female droid, and uh, got to do the, the droid. Oh, voice. I've seen the figures. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> and I got to build that costume um, and perform the costume, which was really fun. So. Now you also helped out Adam Savage. Yes. Didn't you? Yeah, yeah, his, yeah, yeah. His, with this, with that his three chewy outfit, but you did. And you Tom, Tom out. made the the mask. Okay. And I did the three pill for the backpack. For so. the backpack. And that was the same thing. It was. When he contacted me about it, I guess he got my name from Tom, and it was one of those kind of needed a sort of short deadline, and yeah. and I'd just gone freelance. So I did architectural work for a long time, doing okay. arch- architectural renderings. And that was out here? Yeah, I technically worked for a place in Providence, Rhode Island, and then, so I was working for them for a long time in Florida, and when I moved out here, I just had the same job. and. Right. Uh, I just left that job, and it was, I think, my first thing that I got right when I, it was like a day after I quit my job, as I got the call to do that 3PO okay. suit. So, it was, know, here we go. Don't and work with Adam Savage, why not? The, yeah, <laughs> this is awesome. And Adam Savage, by the way, I've been a huge fan of his for a very long time. Sure. And he is just like he is on the show. I hope so. And <laughs> I, I loved him. Like, he was just... That's great such a good dude and I immediately like he's just a good guy he doesn't right. he didn't put on a face for the show and then he's like jerk off screen or something. he is, he is right. super cool so yeah that that's was good to hear. exciting for me that's good to hear. <laughs> so okay we, we touched on a little bit about the performance you know when you were a kid I don't know how old are you uh, 44 you're 44 okay so you've been out here since 2015 and 2014 2014 yeah, yeah six years so you're a performer as a as, as a kid now, I mean, it's Monster Palooza. Yeah. It's Monster. So, I mean, was that like a, a thing too that in you, Monster Pal- Monsters? Or? So, I loved Monsters. And that was, uh, but I never considered myself, I never thought about doing it. Right. Um, and then in 2013, before I moved out here, I met Doug Jones at, okay. uh, in Florida at a convention. This is. Is there anybody out there that doesn't know who Doug Jones it, is? Uh oh. Oh my God. The beer bottles are tipping over. Whoops. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> no, Doug Jones, of course, Abe Sapien. And yeah. I, I've worked with um, uh, water. Um, uh, Shape of Water? Shape of Water, yes, which yeah. I worked on at Legacy <laughs> Effects. <laughs> But that's the problem. When you work in this industry for over 30 years, you get to forget even Shape of Water every now and again. Even amazing things no, Doug, to slip your mind. Doug's an amazing person. I got to work with him on many TV shows over many different shops and commercials and whatever. He, like he's that. lovely. And, yeah. and he's 
one of the nicest people to everybody. Like anybody, yeah. if you have a chance. To and he him, remembers you. And he he rem- that and was. And he gives the best hugs ever. Yes. Next to Howard Burger. Yes. The and best <laughs> hugs ever. <laughs> Howard Burger's number one hug. <laughs> Doug Jones number two. And that well, that's the thing is like when I when I met him, he was before the Shape of Water. I think when Shape of Water came out, he got really recognizable. Sure. People, would, you know, you see a line in his thing, but in his booth, there wasn't really anybody there. He, he, you know, and I was a fan of his already, so I sure. didn't even know he's going to be this thing. I got to talk to him, and he's just so giving and nice. Yeah. And, and, produ- and I told him I actually had come up with my three PO costume earlier. So when I came back, okay. I was like, "Hey, that was me. It's three PO." Like, because he took a picture with uh, he oh, and cool. then one, some other guy that was doing the autographs. So I came over to talk to him, and he's like, "Oh, that's that was fantastic. Whatever did I?" And I was like, "I love what you do." He's in. I'm like, I would love to do that kind of work, you know. Hadn't can really considered it, but then like standing there with him, I was like, I was like, maybe. And then you know how he is. He just oh, he's he like touches my face and goes, <laughs> you know, does the whole thing. He looks at me. He's like, oh, you have a small nose. And you Doug know, knows no boundaries. Yeah, and he, yeah, no, no. It was it is awesome, but it makes you feel in special. a great way. If, if, if it was anybody else, I'd be like, oh, get off of me. No. But he just does it just perfect. He's just got. And uh, and it was weird. It gave me like this weird boost of confidence because of yeah. him. And it was in then when I got out here. I was not. I, I was actively trying to get into you know working with people who did makeup, but not. Okay. I wasn't. I wasn't like this is going to be my thing. It was more just like I'm going to see if I can kind of get my foot in the door and mm-hmm. start doing some of this stuff. But uh, yeah, I attribute like the the little nudge over the edge is because of Doug. So I might have to do some sort of neat creature foam fab suit hmm. yeah uh, hmm. <laughs> well it, actually i should have brought it in we talked about it before but my i'm working on a little um i had done these alien masks a few years ago okay and um working on i did a digital scan of them and recreated them uh in the computer i haven't done the file yet but i want to make them out of silicone with some animatronics okay and I want to foam fab like some spacesuit parts. Okay. So I don't know. So maybe I'll bother if, you about that. If you, if you only knew a foam fabber. <laughs> yeah. I wonder. I wonder if there's gonna be around here. Can, oh my gosh! Go out foam up there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, what you can't see is my uh, uh, storage here at the convention, at the convention center. center. <laughs> yeah, my storage up there. It's a really it. tall booth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a very, it, it's it, you know I measured it out for the uh, the normal booth at Monster Palooza, <laughs> and I think I missed by about four feet. I'm about four feet wider than I'm supposed you, to be. How, what's the ceiling at Monster Palooza? How much space do you have above your booth? Do they? You do know, they that's have a rooms? great question. Huh? <laughs> I could go up as far as I, we could have a spiral staircase, multi-tiered booth. I yes. like this idea. Yeah, I like exactly. this idea. Especially the, the, if you do it at the Pasadena the pa- Center. Oh, go where it's you get three stories. You get, yep, absolutely. I love that idea. <laughs> I love that idea. So what's, what's, what are you doing right now? What's on the agenda? What's on the docket? Uh, I mean, and how much has... I mean, uh, we don't want to hammer COVID yeah, you yeah. Know, really hard. Because, I mean, everybody's going through it. Everybody's staying at home. The reason I'm working on this stuff, you know, I'm at home so much. So I'm building. You yeah. know, and I, I want to be building. Um, but has it thrown off your um, right, game at all right at the very very beginning for just at the very very briefly at the beginning and then uh, I picked up right I had overlap work because we talked about it. I injured my knee so right. I a bunch of work I had before that was like stacked up so once you know while it was a little slow right. COVID time I you know was able to keep some of the projects going that I had and then um, Tom Spina again his other company Regal Robot makes uh, right. like replica things I've been doing a bunch of work for him uh, over the, you know, he's got a bunch of products to do. So I've been doing a lot of ZBrush, either uh, straight modeling or um, digital cleanup for scans and so forth. So just Fantastic. sit in a ZBrush, noodle in a way. Now, when did you start? Did you just teach yourself ZBrush? Or? Yeah, and I, but I started a really long time ago, uh, 2006 or 2007, wow. something like okay. that. And but I was doing it for an architecture firm. I just it was okay. so sort of so most of what I would do was like we would get a have to have a bedroom or something. I'm like, oh, these pillows need some wrinkles. You know what I mean? It wasn't right. like making monsters, but I kind of kept up with the the program enough to so I was aware of what's going on. And when I left my job, I got into it more heavily right. and started to really you know utilize a lot of the features and so forth. But it's crazy because back in the day, same thing. Like living in Florida, Rick Baker was on the forums. Okay. For a ZBrush. And, oh, uh, interesting, and, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, Rick Peter's here. Yeah. So. <laughs> it, it was, it's been interesting watching all these different digital platforms start to grow. Yeah. I mean, obviously, when I started out in the industry, it was pencil to paper. Yeah. It was, you know, 
you know, drawing or painting the production artwork, mm -hmm. sculpting maquettes and things like that, and just watching kind of all that go away. But then the same artistry has to come back into ZBrush and Adobe Photoshop. Totally. Things like that. You know, one of my guests is going to be coming up on what day? Tomorrow. Um, we're going to be here with Steve Johnson as Constantine Sakaris. Ooh. And watching Constantine at Steve's, it was pencil to paper. It yeah. Was, it was, you know, Copic markers and airbrushing and all this sort of thing like that. And he was resistant for a little while. I remember talking to yeah. him. He's like, oh, no, I just, I, I love, you know, the touch of paper. I love the feel of, like, you know, all that kind of totally. stuff. Totally. And of course, now he's one of the premier ZBrush you know, guys. ZBrush, you know, well, it's, all that it's kind hard of stuff. because once you get in there and you start to get the hang of it, it's so convenient. Because I sculpted clay as well, and, right. I, and I've okay. drawn for years. I did illustrations for a t-shirt company and did graphic design for years, so right. I can draw. It's not, in I did matte painting work for like digital oh, really? matte painting for yeah. So my first job did, on films or TV or, uh, or a little for bit of some commercials and stuff, commercials but like my stuff, first. Okay job that was Star Wars related ever was in 2010 and it was for Star Wars Lego Clone Wars <laughs> like a TV commercial like okay. if, and so and I was again, again in Florida and I was working for a place out here which was for me I was very excited but uh, guys you map painting work for Star Wars things so that was so you keep hitting the Star Wars every, yeah, every yeah, now yeah. and again it Real, comes around that's to a, a friend of mine worked at Blizzard and he's and they offered him the job and he was busy and he's like I know a guy who could do this and he knew I like Star Wars so I'd be into it so that was he could do it and he'll love it it was very <laughs> fun but but um, going back to the, doing the ZBrush uh, I've done projects where I you know concept it in ZBrush just because I can do it quick and I can get them turnarounds they can see the thing from every side right. And you can bang out a concept really fast. It's rough, but it you know gives them the feel. I have not started it yet, mm -hmm. and I know I need to. You you probably good if you sculpt, you'd be good at it. I, you you clearly have I'm, a grasp. I'm a sculptor. I'm an illustrator. Yeah, so you, you got to grasp the forms, and that's really what it takes. I think. Yeah, and, it's and the newer versions have added so much to make it sure. easier for a sculptor. Because when I started, if if your geometry wasn't right, you'd sculpt for a little bit, and all of a sudden you'd run out of geometry, and it was like. Okay, now I got to export the file back out to 3 c or Max right. or Maya and fix something and bring it back in and uh, re-project the geometry. It was like a right. huge thing. Now it's like Dynamesh, just and then right. just to keep going. I, I mean, there, there was a small program. It wasn't ZBrush that I was messing around with. And it's like just, Sculptress or it's, one of those? Yeah, it, um, of something Forge or something. Okay. I can't remember the name of it, but um, so Forger. into... Was it? Forger? I, I think it was Forger, okay. yeah. And it's a ZBrush-ish type thing for iPad. Okay. And I oh, was just yeah, yeah, yeah. messing around on it, and it's like, oh my god, it's like sculpting with clay. <laughs> and it's just, and especially if you know how to sculpt. Yeah. And you know, like you start pushing it around, but it, it, that's the thing that's so amazing about it. I've talked to other digital artists, and I've watched them sculpt and create these really great things, yeah. you know, digitally, you know, in three-dimensional yeah. or 2D space or whatever. Like that. and then I ask, it's like, are, are you a sculptor as well? Oh no, I, I can't. And it's like it, they they could though, right? But it's it's so intuitive. That's the thing. It's like being able to to work the program. Yeah. You know, I wonder how it translates I, if somebody I, who's never sculpted before but does ZBrush. Oh, so this is the thing. I when I was doing architectural ornaments, for example, it was constantly, you know, we'd say illustration because we would render it and then we'd do a ton of Photoshop to them to really pump, you know, punch it up right. and draw your eye where it needs to go but i learned so much digitally doing that that it it made my photography better made my drawing better in just because i'm learning techniques in there right. and just working on it over and over that you just inadvertently get better at things and i feel right. like the same thing if you're good at zbrush and you understand how to make the forms you could get clay and do it like guaranteed sure. you know and so when someone's like i'm not a sculptor I'm like you're a sculptor you're doing it yeah the same it's, you just have to get used to the it's, it's tactile i things. mean what i only just started drawing on an ipad about two years ago yeah something like that and i was always pencil to paper always yeah. pencil to paper and i never painted i didn't do any watercolor or acrylic or anything i mean way in the past i did in school but um and then all of a sudden we started messing around with the ipad because I, I think painting to me was always kind of scary. Like, what if I mess up the canvas? Yeah. What if I mess up the thing I'm painting? What if I yep. do that? I'd rather have somebody else paint it. And now that I'm doing this for myself, I have to paint it. But you miss that kind of tooth, you yep. know, like lead that on on paper. Feeling it, yeah. You miss that tooth. But boy, the the iPad and just using like a Procreate or Sketchbook Pro. I, I feel like I, it, it ups your learning curve so fast. It does. And, and so- And I'm working faster yes, than I've ever- So what I was doing, uh, I would draw in, in Photoshop with the with the tablet and I would do these, I would do them every day. I would do a 30 minute 
drawing every day and do a landscape. Okay. And uh, I would just give myself 30 minutes. It would be super rough, but it would be the kind of thing, like, when you backed out, I wanted to look as close to a picture as possible. So, it was like, the, I wanted the values and all the hues to be correct and kind of have good composition, you know? Right. And just capture what it needed to. But doing this that block in really fast it helped my artwork so much even if i go to pencil or whatever it just even in clay like it, it just changed my mindset about how i was looking i would stop obsessing over the detail first and really get like a, a right. the overall forms in and it's i don't know i feel like it's the difference between taking photos digitally and doing on film when you can sit there and niddle with the, the settings right. and figure it out, like, okay, this setting works, and you don't have to wait for it to develop and come home, and then, right. like, well, what was I doing, you know? Right. So it just, I think it speeds up the whole process. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I would avoid cheats. So when I do those drawings, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sample colors from a picture or whatever. I would look at the picture and try to match what I saw without doing a cheat, and that was helpful to me as well. So random, random right. tips. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, speaking of that too, I mean, so you haven't been out here really all that long. No, no. So, I mean, you went from architecture yeah. and came out here and did a little bit of architectural drawing, right? Yeah, and it had overlap where, like, since I met, I've been friends with Tom online since like 2012 probably, so when I got here, kind of like already, uh, and I've actually bugged a lot of people that were out here before I moved out. Right. So, kind of a little network of people that I sort of knew. So. Right, which is good to know. Yeah, But, yeah. I mean, I, those, those are some of the questions I get. Um, you know, coming in on Facebook or Instagram, things like that. It, it's, you know, how do I get into this? How do I, you know, and you were clearly older when you moved out here. Yeah. And established in a different kind of industry. Yeah. But was that intimidating to you? You knew that you were shifting from one thing to another and it's like, no. I think I want to get into this performance and makeup. I and never, I grew up in a family of people that just always just kind of did whatever. So right. my grandpa would just... He was an actor when he was young, and okay. then he worked for Pan Am for years and years, and then he retired and he went back to acting, and he could just build anything, and he'd fix his own cars, and whatever it was he wanted to do, he could just, he would just do it. And Figure it, it and out. It, yeah. And that, that was like, my and my dad too, same thing, like, they would just see a thing, and that was like their point of reference. So, so uh, I just grew up never feeling like it was a big deal to just change what I was doing. So if I do an architecture, but I want to do that other thing, I'm like, uh, just move over just and move over there. start doing it. And, yeah. and so while I was doing the architecture work, I was doing freelance, like I was doing prop repair and building stuff okay. for people on the side. And, and that I, was still back in Florida. And this here. That was and here, okay. Yeah, yeah, I started building some stuff in Florida that was random, but not enough that I would even consider supporting myself on it, you know? Right. And Tom, while well, he was like, you gotta, he's like, you could quit, you, you have enough work, you know, there's plenty right. of things. And I was scared, because, you know, I have sure. like a salary and all these things. And I got this job with this guy named Eric Beck who had this YouTube channel called Backyard Effects, Indie okay. Mobile. And I was a fan of his channel for a long time. And he contacted me on Blue. And I was like, oh my gosh, this Eric Beck is contacting me. And he got my name from some mutual friend and said, hey, uh, our friend said you could, you'd be good at doing this. You would be interested in building Lego um, oh, okay. projects with me. Just Lego. So it was super random. But it was one of those projects where I'm making things. And... It's, uh, you know, 17 days, and I ended up paying more than I got in a month at my job. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay. that, And then that's when I put in my notice, because like, okay, <laughs> this is like, because I like doing random stuff. Like, if you're like, hey, can you build a boat, you know, like a prop boat? Right. I'll like, yeah, I can build that. Or like, hey, can you make an alien? I'll like, yeah, I can go do, like, whatever it is. I, right. I enjoy making stuff. So I don't have, like, a specific thing necessarily. Okay. Um, so when I moved out, it's like my skill set's real broad. And that is not like super amazing at one thing or another, but I can right. do a lot of different things. So jack of all trades, you jack of all Which trades. Which is good. To, it's it's and it, I mean that's another thing. It's it's just good to. I mean, I grew up kind of teaching myself how to do this stuff. Where yeah. it was, you know, I saw Star Wars when it first came out in '77. Yeah. So I'm a nine-year-old kid watching that, and it was like the light bulb went off. That's what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> and so you know. In the Midwest and Wisconsin, it's like, I, how, how do you pull you, it together? Do you do that? Where did but you it, get stuff in Wisconsin? Oh, you just figure it out. Yeah. I mean, and that's that's the thing. Yeah. You just you start collecting the books and the magazines and Fangoria and Starlog and Famous Monsters and things looking like that. Looking in the backgrounds, all the pictures. And, and what are they using? And that's more 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 times than not. It's like looking at those photographs. Yeah. And like, what's on their table? Yes. What exactly. are the tools? And then I found out after I moved out here. Every now and again, you place something weird on your table because you know somebody's looking at something <laughs> in Fangoria or Starlog. <laughs> So 
It's like, why are they using that on there? Yeah. It's like, we're not. <laughs> Applesauce. Yeah, it's like, more, time, more times than not, it's it's a 90, 99% yeah. legit. So it's all, but every now and again, it's like you, you're sitting there sculpting with a fork. You yeah. know, it's like, wow, they use a fork for they, texture. Interesting. You it's never like, know. You know, well, I'm sure people have. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, when I was a kid growing up, it was just like, yeah, figure it out. You yeah. know, you get those books, and then it's like, ordering away for latex rubber and ordering away for this and it's not cheap it's but even in florida that was less of a problem because they had orlando sure. where they the theme parks so there were there was a film industry down there as well or yeah. a theme park and, and they didn't they had film stuff even like in south florida they would do film stuff in like right. miami we got a question yeah it's not directed at either of you so I oh great. You're talking it's to. directed I'm, at yoda guessing, Gordon, but it uh, says what's one of your favorite projects you've worked on Ooh. you go first wow this is really tough because they get People have asked me this before. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I've done some restoration. That I, I can't talk about it, like unfortunately. But this has <laughs> been like, like I've been able to do restoration on one of my. We're gonna try not to do that too much. Favorite like we puppets. can't talk about yeah. this. But <laughs> I haven't done any NDA stuff, but like, there's yeah. always like those projects where you're like, this is awesome. Like it, it hasn't come out yet. And yeah, you can't get into it. Um, the thing uh, getting that Jedi Temple Challenge show that I just did, it was really cool because I got to do. Uh, like most of the concepts from the droid, they got approved by an art director and everything, and you know, guided a little bit, but then built a costume and performance. So that was really in DB, like legitimately part of like Star Wars, right? Uh, part of the universe, for yeah. Star Wars universe is very, very special for me. That's great. Um, but there's been a whole bunch of other ones. A lot of restoration work where, again, it's like uh, an iconic movie prop. I've worked on like some of the shoes from like Back to Future Two, or oh, some, you know, like yeah, just yeah. stuff that you that's really really iconic and it, here it is in your hands and you know you're restoring it but it's really hard to tell a favor what about you like, I, you know it, there's I've worked on a lot of films and I've worked on a lot of really great films um, working at Legacy I got to work on a lot of the Marvel films yeah be on a few of those sets work with those people in the shop um, you know KMB we did some great stuff I mean from Dust Till Dawn I worked on Pulp yeah. Fiction oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I mean that's all really great work but it, I always come back to, there was a moment in my career, and I had, I'd been working for a while. I had been out here for at least 15 years or so. And we did this commercial at Stan Winston Studio. <laughs> and it was just a, it was a Capital One credit card okay. commercial. <laughs> but we built a giant squid oh. that is attacking like a Nautilus type oh, submarine. Oh yeah. And the, the squid is kind of up on the submarine and we've got a few tentacles that were puppeteering and then they had some guys up on cables and they were going to digitally put in some tentacles uh -huh. and then the really great thing about this is that we got to build the squid it went in the tank at paramount oh wow so they filled up the tank so we're in water yeah. up to our chest in and then they've got <laughs> two jet skis that guys are turning or you know they're they're doing donuts with jet skis and the waves are just the waves are six and a half feet tall so we're <laughs> jumping i'm not six feet tall so i'm <laughs> i'm jumping with the wave puppeteering a tentacle they've got rain machines wind machines oh and all gosh. this stuff in the paramount tank at the, in, you know in the middle of the night and then i'm looking up and there's the paramount water tower on <laughs> lot and it, it keeps going back to the you know i'm i'm walking in the footsteps of, of giants on these yeah on these lots yeah and i'm just like it's a, it's a silly Capital One commercial that we're shooting for one night in the tank at Paramount. And I'm going, this this might be one of the coolest so things unreal. I've <laughs> ever done. And I mean, I got to work on The Mandalorian. Yeah. I mean, that was great. I've, I've worked on so many great films. I mean, th there's stuff that I've, I've forgotten that I've worked on. I have to look at my own yeah, IMDb like, and it's like, oh yeah, that's right, I worked on that. That's killer. You know, I forgot I worked on Dances with Wolves. Yeah. You know? oh, <laughs> Just like stuff like that. You know, but um, it, it's, it's uh, you look at those things and, but I mean, just, you know, just being in that tank, in a, in a wetsuit, puppeteering tentacles, on that lot, I mean, uh -huh. on a, it's, it's a weird answer. But it's special. It's really special because yeah. there was that moment, and I kind of felt like this is cool, um, you know. But I've I've got tons of them, and I'm I'm going to be sharing a lot of those moments over the next. Because I can see you just tell right now, and, like, and then there's this moment, and then there's that moment. Because I got I you know again when I talked with, with with Tom Woodruff, it's like you get lucky enough. You have to be in the right place. Yep. And you have to have talent. Yep. But there's a lot of luck. 
Yeah. There's a lot of luck involved. If, if, if you have that talent and you're in the right place, and that's that little bit of luck yep. that you're going to get in there, that you're going to work at this shop or that shop or, you know, yeah. get to work on a Star Wars project. It, it, you know, we both worked on, you know, because for me to, to work on a Star Wars project is just amazing. like, that's yeah. the holy grail. I'm done. Yeah. I don't, I don't need to do much more. I, yeah. I remember talking to a buddy of mine, uh, Shannon Shea, and years ago, and he said, you know, I've, I've worked before he moved out of town. And he's like, man, I've worked on some of the biggest films. I've worked on The Terminators. I've worked on Jurassic. I've worked on this <laughs> and that. And he's kind of like, yeah, I've... I've done it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I need to do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's a, enough. You know, now I could be a forest ranger. And there you go. I don't know if he's being a forest ranger. He's doing some fun stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, so th those are moments. Is there any other question that came through? No, but your mom says hi. She can't figure out Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. How did she do that on Instagram? Um, Spash Library. Oh, so she—that's my sister. Yeah, okay, uh, so she must be speaking. With through your sister. Oh, no. Channeling your mother. That's all right, then. <laughs> They're talking about you behind your back. Well, they usually talk about me in front of my back, so that's all right. <laughs> in front of <laughs> Well, I think... I mean, this is great having you here. I love I'm, it. I'm, Thanks for inviting me. Of course. Um, I, I definitely want to... I'm going to keep watching you. You're going to come over here. We're going to make a monster suit. I would love to do that. And uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to work together. We're going to do some fun stuff. I like this. And you're going to show me some th C-3PO stuff. I, I can do that. Because. You can have the whole droid over here I'm hanging gonna, out. I want to touch it. And we're going we're gonna to make a really big linebacker C-3PO for you. We can do me. that. <laughs> because, because we can just adjust one of those models, print it up, and then we could probably foam fab it. We probably could do that. I remember, actually, I'll tell you this. I do remember this now. See, it triggered. But this is from back when I was 10 <laughs> years old. I'm 53 now. I have to remember back to when I was 10. <laughs> I My my parents worked in the, um, they were both school teachers. Mm -hmm. And we were in a, a paper mill town in the Midwest. Okay. So they got all this paper like crazy for free, you know, construction yeah, paper. Yeah, yeah. They got this, this stack of gold paper. Uh. And it was like a mustardy gold. I made a C-3PO costume just by layering that up and gluing it down and wrapping it and uh -huh. all that. And Sharpie marked all that stuff. Oh I got. my gosh. I think I got to about to the waist. I had the I had the head, but yeah, I wish I still had it. Yeah, you can make another one. But I, I can I get to remember how good I think it was. Well, it's what it feels like I was when you're 10. a kid. <laughs> so. When you're a kid. I, that's the thing is I made stuff when I was a kid and it was like Again, probably garbage when I think yeah. about it now, but it felt right when I wore it. I, right. I felt like oh, that character. I had my arms up. Yeah. And this and that. There was a big shoelace that went up the back, though, that Whoa. my mom had to, like, you know, get me into it. That so you're way. kind of cinched in the same way the real suit. I, there you go. You have yeah. to have a person get you in there, yeah. and then you're like, oh, I'm trapped now. Like, uh, somebody get me out now. So. <laughs> what up? Here's a fun one to tell them. Public. Okay. Um, what's your worst on set incident? Ooh. Do, do you have one? I don't really have anything bad. I've had stuff break, but I had a replacement. So I just ran and got that replacement. There's always that breakage. I'm trying to think the worst onset incident. See, it, it, sometimes it's really hard to tell these without throwing somebody under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, I'm, I try not, I try my best not to screw up. You know, and I, I, I try to build for, you know, when I'm saddled with a guy that I've got to build. Yeah. And it's got to perform on set. Something always goes wrong. You can plan, plan, plan. Something always goes yeah. wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, And then it's, it's that improvising. Yeah, without throwing anybody under the bus, I don't know if I can tell, like, the worst one because there's some bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to be nice. This is all about being nice and giving hugs. Your names out. No, I can't because <laughs> some of it's way too recent. <laughs> no, I mean, know. It, the worst moments are when you're unprepared. Yeah, I mean, I, off guard, right? I'm trying to think any times when I was like really off guard. I did these films in Romania. Um, it was a uh, full moon films, and you know I was over there for months, months and months. And we went over with all the stuff that we needed that yeah. we, we, was called for in the script. And then the director was like, "Hey, could you have this?" And it's like, "For when? Tomorrow?" Tomorrow? <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" It's like, oh, I don't know. Like, and then you figure it out. You just figure out how to do it. It's all magic. Sometimes that last yeah. minute thing, you can pull something together that you didn't want to expect. Yeah. That's awesome. There's, there's <laughs> stuff. I mean, there's so many times on Your set. Your story is. Yeah, I'll have to get to that. I'll, I'll get to a theft, a theft story at some point. <laughs> but yeah, there's always something where you just, you know, you open up your toolbox and it's like, I've got some bailing wire. I got some cutters. I've got some spray glue. I've got, I got to make this work somehow. And you know, but the thing is, everybody that doesn't do this thinks you're a magician because you whatever you pull together and it right. works. Like, oh my gosh, you're so good. Well, it's like right now. It's, you take the camera right now and we pan it. 
you know, it's like you, you're only seeing what we're giving you. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And it's like any film, you know, it's like how many times I've been on a set for like an Avengers film or something like that, and it's like green, 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 and, a little stuff. and then like some <laughs> rubble and that, and you know, Robert Downey in like half of his suit with mocap dots all over him and stuff like that, and it's just kind of like, That's it's like. Well, not an incident, but one of my first, fr another freelance job right when I started was making a big pile of rubble for a driveway for a farmer's insurance commercial. Yeah. And it was one of those, I was making everything out of foam, all the rocks and the concrete pieces. And because they needed to be able to put it on the driveway and not ruin the driveway. Okay. And But it needed to be like however big. And I made hundreds of these rocks and I figured out like really good technique to make them quick. And then still, even the big pile is probably not going to be big enough. So I'm like, okay, how am I going to do this? Because I need this like tomorrow. And I made this big, stupid chicken wire support underneath. And I could like just pile the rocks in the front of right. it. And it made the pile look humongous. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <it's okay. laughs> and, uh, but it was that last minute thing. Like, hey, we need the, the, broad, the pile to be like, I can't remember, like 14 feet by right. 6 feet high. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm like... All the foam I've got isn't even close. Like yeah. so, but yes. but in the moment of panic, and then the solution comes to you, like okay, and then work great, and they were like, "This was fantastic." You and just make it up on the fly. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. And, and yeah, then you turn around the back of it, and it's like, "Oh, this is barely holding together." It's great. Yeah, no, and that's and that's the thing. It's like it barely holds together, but if it works on film, yeah, for those few seconds. Then we're good. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Gordon, it's a pleasure meeting. Yeah. You. Well, so great to, uh, we'll do one of those. We're going to have some hand sanitizer. I'm just going to lick it right now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But uh, we're going to take another break, and then we'll be back, uh, and then probably with another guest. At some point or another, maybe I'll actually carve a little foam. <laughs> we'll see. But it's one, ga one guest after another here at uh, right. uh, Mini Son of Monster Palooza. So. Thanks right. for having me. Thanks, Garden. We'll talk to you. We'll see you.